This is Ryland with Rainsford Photography where we are all about growing confidence for you, the wedding photographer. Um, today we're gonna to be talking about one of the most important software tools that we use, Lightroom. It's a cloudy day today. The light keeps going in and out and it's driving us bonkers. But you know what? That's life. When we first started our business, all we used was Photoshop because we thought that that was the golden standard, that was what we were supposed to use. Um, you can do so many powerful things with Photoshop, but we very quickly realized it was taking us hours and hours and hours just to edit an engagement session, which really isn't that many photos. So then we started doing weddings. Guess what? All of a sudden we had thousands of photos we had to edit and using Photoshop was just not going to work. We did not have that kind of time. So that's when we found out about Lightroom and it has totally changed our lives. So over the next few videos, I'm gonna take you through a detailed walkthrough of Lightroom, explaining the functionality, all the cool tools, all the amazing things that you can do with it, um, how to use it to increase efficiency, how to use it to increase your organization, how to shoot for editing in Lightroom, and it's just gonna be amazing. See so y'all ready? Let's roll the intro and dive in. friends so let's just jump in. I'm going to walk you through the tool in this intro today and what some of the functionality is just like what Lightroom looks like, what's here, how you can use it, lots of cool stuff. So before we dive into Lightroom itself let's take a step back real quick and talk about the differences between Lightroom and Photoshop. So fundamentally Photoshop is meant for editing single photos or just a few photos and doing a lot of heavy editing heavy adjusting, heavy changing. There's a ton of functionality in Photoshop for like moving people's heads around. However, it is meant for only doing that on a few number of photos. Lightroom, on the other hand, is meant for editing and organizing a large number of photos. And so that's really the key difference. So for example, in Lightroom, there's no save as button because all it does is it reads in your raw files and as you make edits, all it does is apply basically a set of instructions to that raw photo uh, to tell the computer how to render it differently. And so it doesn't actually change the original photo, so you don't actually have to save anything. Um, and so you can do that for a lot of photos, you can do that very quickly, you can sync those instructions across a ton of photos to apply the same edits to a bunch of photos all at the same time. Um, and you can continually edit photos and continue coming back to them and tweaking them without having to have a bunch of individual files open, saving a bunch of things, having a bunch of layers, if you know what those are in Photoshop. It doesn't have any of that. So it's much simpler, much faster. It also has a much uh, more structured organization piece in Lightroom. So that's where we're actually gonna start. So when you first import photos, it brings you the photos into the library view. So if you look over here on the left, it shows you what catalog you're in, and it shows you um, where those files are stored, how many files there are. I've just got a few selected here, just the ones that we're gonna look at today. Um, and this is really the organization piece here on the left. It also, on import, gives you a few options for some kind of very basic kind of import preset kind of stuff. So if you use presets, which we'll also talk about in another module, um, you, what you can do is at the very beginning, you can select as many photos as you want from your catalog and you can apply um, your preset or a downloaded preset or a purchase preset um, to all those photos very quickly. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply our baseline preset, which we'll walk through that in just a second, um, to these photos. It's the preset that we use for everything. So <clears throat> then to once you've gotten through the organization piece, um, then we'll move into where you actually edit the photos. So this is going into the develop module, or the develop uh, view. You can also get there by pressing D. You can get back to library by pressing G, which is really helpful. Um, <clears throat> so let's go over to develop. A couple things here. First, on the left, uh, you see your presets. It also shows you um, history. Uh, so after you've made edits to your photos, it'll show you what those edits were. 
So I imported um, this picture and I applied baseline to it, my baseline preset. So that's the left side. It also shows you your zoom. So you can zoom to one to one, you can zoom to fill, you can zoom to fit. Um, you can toggle between those by pressing Z or by clicking on the photo itself. Um, that'll zoom. And then over here on the right hand side is where you have all your real editing tools. So the first thing that you'll see is a histogram. And what this histogram does is it basically shows you all the different color balances that you have. Your, your blacks over here on the left, advancing from shadows, exposure, highlights, and whites um, as you move to the right across your photo. Let's go through this basic section first. So this is where it gives you all your kind of your basic adjustments. Um, one of the first things that we do after we've applied our, our baseline preset is we usually adjust the exposure. We want to bring the exposure up to kind of bring the shadows up to where we want them. We will then use things like contrast to adjust the contrast like this. Um, pretty basic. You can also go back to zero if you just double click on the slider. Here you can see the highlights look a little blown out to me, so I'm going to pull the highlights down. Uh, the shadows are still a little deeper than we like, so I'm going to pull the shadows up. Basically all that does is it raises the brightness of your, of your shadows in the photo. Highlights is the opposite. But then you can also adjust the whites and blacks specifically. So whites will adjust just the white parts um, rather than just kind of bringing up all the highlights. And you can see how that affects things on your histogram here um, as you go. So if it skews things closer to or further away from this white portion of your photo here. So that can be super helpful to continue fine tuning and blacks does the same thing but just with the blacks in your photo. And then you have this section called presence. Texture we don't really use a whole lot. Um, we like to use clarity instead. And clarity really just kind of sharpens up um, the photo as a whole and really can make your subject pop, which we really like. So part of our baseline preset is it brings the clarity up to 25. Dehaze is an interesting tool. If you have a lot of, um, like you were shooting into the sun, you were backlit and you have a lot of haze, dehaze can take that out. Uh, but it's a pretty kind of it's pretty intense tool and so it can be overdone pretty easily but and then finally skipped over the white balance here but this is really important too with the white balance you can adjust the temperature as well as the tint of your photo um, so that's how you want to use those so I'm going to bring the temperature up just a little bit we usually try to adjust our white balance uh, to treat skin tones it's really what you want to look for look at these skin tones and try to get something that looks nice um, and natural. So the next tool that we have is the tone curve. And the tone curve is super interesting and really powerful uh, because you can use it to make pretty deep in-depth changes to uh, the exposure of your photo. Um, what I mean by that is you've got here on the left hand side, some of your Instagram, you've got blacks move to kind of mid-tones in the middle and then whites on the right. So one way that you can like apply some matte to your photo uh, to make it look more vintagey is you can bring up the blacks and basically all that does is it clips the blacks and you can see how that makes it look more um, vintage uh, and faded almost um, so that's definitely something you can do you can do the same thing with highlights it's harder to see on this photo but you can flatten your highlights too to really make a photo look kind of old and faded, which is definitely a pretty, uh, a pretty popular style right now. Um, and then in the middle, you can adjust the blacks, uh, the mid-tone kind of shadows. Uh, you bring these down, it'll deepen them. As you bring it up, it'll lighten them. Um, and you can do the same thing with the kind of the upper end of the mid-tones, getting more towards the highlights. Um, you can make them brighter, or you can bring them down and make them darker. Um, that's what this, this uh, tone curve does. So you can not only do that for the overall brightness of the photo, but you can also do that for some of the base individual colors. Another way you can affect color is with the HSL slider, so hue, saturation, and luminance. You can adjust the hue, the saturation, and the luminance all individually, or you can go by color, and you can pull up each individual color, and you have hue, saturation, and luminance all together. So that's just a brief introduction to the color sliders. Then you've got uh, split toning, which this basically can apply a hue, just kind of blanket apply it across an entire photo. 
Um, so if you wanted to apply like yellow to all the highlights in your photo or blue or red, you can do that just like that. In detail, you can affect sharpening. Noise reduction is really helpful for like reception photos or photos in the evening where you may have had to bump the ISO up. Lens corrections. Um, so every lens has a built-in profile in Adobe and that pulls through into Photoshop and Lightroom. And so basically what this does is it affects some distortion amongst your photo as well as vignetting, which is basically just when the, the edges of the photo get darker. So we actually use this um, to brighten up the edges of the photo um, a little bit more naturally, which we like. Transform and use it to do some funky things with your photos. Um, so have fun playing with those. Effects, we don't often use either, unless you're trying to add grain to a photo, especially if you have an older, like a, a photo in the evening and you wanna to try to make it just really look grainy. And then calibration is another another way to affect the colors uh, using the red, green, and blue primary colors. Um, you can affect both the hue and the saturation um, across the entire photo by using this, these calibration sliders. Um, so there are a lot of ways you can affect color specifically because that's really important, especially for people with skin tones. Um, but there are a couple other tools up here I wanted to show you real fast. And to do that, we're actually gonna switch over to another photo. So here I've got this photo. As you can see, it's pretty dark because I didn't want to lose the details in the sky. So what you want to do here, often what I'll do is I'll bring up the exposure a little bit, bring down the highlights a little bit to try to bring down the sky, maybe bring down the whites a little bit too to kind of balance, bring out some of those clouds in the sky. But I might bring up the shadows because I knew that they were in the shadows, but that's still quite not enough. Um, I want to make the grass a little bit more uh, warm, make their skin tones a little more warm because it was a beautiful evening. But I feel like that's still not quite enough. What else do I want to do? This is where I need some more spot adjustments or local adjustments. And that's what really all these tools here are for. Um, you can use a gradient filter. Um, and this basically all it does is it will affect, it'll bring down the exposure um, through a gradient across your photo. So conversely, I could use this at the bottom of the photo to bring up the, uh, the shadows in the bottom of the photo, which I think I'm gonna do. And then I think that's better, but I may still wanna make my couple pop a little bit more, kind of pop out of this context that they're in. And that's where um, this local adjustment brush basically just applies a mask on top of your photo, similar to a layer of Photoshop, but much more easily. And so I can just paint um, over my couple here, and then I can adjust the exposure just over them um, to give them a nice pop. Um, you can do a lot of things with these local adjustments. It's basically just painting adjustments wherever you want in the photo, but just in a localized spot. So it's super powerful, but you gotta be careful. We'll talk about this in efficiency because it can take a lot of time, especially if you try to do it to a lot of photos. And then the final one here that's helpful is the radial filter. And that basically applies the same thing as a gradient but just in a radial direction rather than in a linear one. Two more things we're gonna talk about before we come in for landing on this tutorial. First is cropping, which is this button right here. You always wanna know how to crop. You can swing it around just like that um, by grabbing on the sides or the corner or the top, really anywhere. Um, you can also grab the corner and go in and out like that. And then the last thing is this guy right here, the spot removal tool. Um, this is a great kind of overlap with Photoshop and there's a ton of power that you can do. So example, um, let's say I want to get rid of this tree right here. All I have to do is I got to paint over the tree just like that and it will automatically replace that location in the photo with another location from the photo that it believes matches uh, what you're trying to replace pretty well. Um, so you can see it grabbed from right over here. I can move this around if I want it to replace with something slightly different. Um, but I actually liked the way it had it. I feel like it blended well. Uh, so spot removal is super helpful as well. So there we go. Um, guys, over the next few videos, we're gonna be going through all these tools in a lot more detail, as well as how to use these tools and how to sync across other photos in an efficient way, how to get organized. Um, there's gonna be a lot more to come. So stay tuned, subscribe to our channel so you can see those new videos as soon as they come out. 
uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. See ya.